The Holy Gospel is taken from that of St. Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of King Herod, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to adore him. And King Herod, hearing this, was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And suddenly together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people inquired of them where Christ should be born. For they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judah, for so it is written by the prophet, And now Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of these shall come forth the captain that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, calling privately the wise men, learned diligently of them the time of the star which appeared to them. And, and sending them into Bethlehem, said, Go and diligently inquire after the child. When you have found him, bring me word again, that I also may come and adore him. Who, having heard the king, went their way. Behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the child was. And seeing the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And entering into the house, they found the child with Mary his mother. And falling down, they adored him. And opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having received an answer and sleep, they should not return to Herod. They went back another way into their country. And thus is the word of the day, the Holy Gospel. Ave Maria Prisma, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, first Saturday, it is the first Saturday, so we want to make communions a reparation to our Lord for all the infant offenses and blasphemies that have been hurled up against Our Lady, against her Immaculate Heart, in her images, in her divine motherhood, and so forth. Today it's especially important uh, to remember that if you don't have something else to make a reparation for, to make one for the stamp, which Our Lady was removed from her place at the foot of the cross, and that diabolical monster Father Luther was placed there. So we can't make enough reparation for that on the stamp that I hate to say was issued by the Vatican. So we have to make reparation for that. As to the Feast of the Epiphany, it's the feast of the nation being told of the Messiah. One of the great mysteries of all this, of course, is that the Jews that had the true religion, biblical Judaism was the true religion, were, were the Israel of God. Now, the Jews had the true religion, and it was all about preparing for and accepting Christ. And then when he showed up, they didn't like what they got. So they rejected him. And the Gentiles came in. One of the most amazing things in history. But our ancestors converted from their pagan ways, unless you're a Hebrew Catholic, from their pagan ways, and accepted our Lord. The Judaism we have right now is not biblical Judaism. You can't have Judaism without Christ. It's all about preparing for Christ in biblical Judaism. And now, as Pius XII said, we're the Israel of God. What they have right now is rabbinic Judaism, it's a later development. It develops after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. The rabbis figure out, now what do we do? And it has one note. There's only one thing you have to believe to be a Jew, and that's that Christ isn't the Messiah. You can be all over the map except for that. So what they have now is a diabolical substitute. So we have to pray for them as well. So we're celebrating the fact that the nations discovered our Lord in the person of the three Kings, the three wise men, the Magi, they're actually Zoroastrian's priests, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. We know their names from tradition. St. Thomas the Apostle, when he went out into Mesopotamia, actually consecrated them bishops. The relics were moved ahead of the Turks. They're now in Cologne, Germany. So in the cathedral in Cologne is where the relics of the wise men are right now. So they're certainly historical figures. This time of year, their, their historicity is also attacked like everything else by these little termites that can't stand anything and are always gnawing away at stuff. So they're historical figures. But the one thing I mentioned, I've mentioned this before, but it's, it's really something to meditate on. What we see there is an amazing thing. These guys are pagans. They're pagans, and they're led to Christ. So when angel in the, the angels in the sky on Christmas said, peace on earth to men of good will. It didn't say peace on earth to good men or peace on earth, goodwill to men. It's a peace on earth to men of goodwill. A man of goodwill isn't necessarily a good man, but he's somebody that when he hears the truth, is going to change and act accordingly. That's who God's peace goes on. And here you see a perfect example of these with these wise men. 
They came led by astrology to our Lord. But then as the gospel says, they returned home by a different route. Now obviously, at the first level, that means they went home on a different road. But it also means something spiritually. They'd seen the truth. They embraced it. They turned away from what they had been doing and turned toward Christ. That's what the Benedictines mean in a certain way by the daily conversion. Every day we have to make sure that the compass in our heart is aimed toward the truth so that we really can be the men of goodwill on whom Christ's peace rests.